Hi guys, so in the spirit of my quarter life crisis slash living abroad meltdown that I had last week, I thought I would do a video about living abroad. But because I'm already preparing quite an extensive blog post about living abroad, I thought that for my YouTube channel I would keep things light and do the living abroad tag, which I'm sure will be very informative as well. So it has 18 questions and I'll just start with the first one, which is what's your name? That's a very random question and you probably, most of you probably already know my name, but my name is Sandra. Uh, which country do you live in? I currently live in the UK, uh, more precisely in London. Number three is do you live alone or with your family? All of my family, all of my relatives are back home in Slovenia. I'm living with two other girls. We are sharing a house and um, I haven't met them before I moved in with them. So yeah, that's I guess that's the answer to the question. Question number four is how long have you lived there? Uh, I have lived in London for the past two years and a half, which is quite a long time, I guess. Um, it doesn't seem that long, but yeah, it's been two years and a half already. Have you ever lived in another country? Which one? I have only ever lived in Slovenia before, which is my home country. It's where I was born and it's where I lived. Uh, up until I was 22 years old, so this is my first living abroad experience, but it may not be my last one. <laughs> I don't know where the life is planning to take me in the next couple of years, but I guess you'll see. Question number six is how old are you? I just turned 25 years old. Why did you decide to move abroad? I'm gonna try to keep it very short, but the gist of it is I have always been a little bit obsessed with London. Uh, ever since I was little, I've always wanted to go to London and I finally went when I was 12 years old or 13. Uh, my mom took me. Um, and I fell in love with it even more and ever since then one of my life goals was to live in London one day. And also in general I've always wanted to live abroad just because I never quite fit in with the crowd back home. I was always the odd one out, I was always interested in other things and I was really attracted to this like multicultural culture I guess. So deep down in my heart I've always kind of wanted to get away and move abroad and kind of experience another way of life and be around people that are more open and share my interests and stuff like that. So yeah, I've always kind of wanted to move abroad and when I graduated uni I just decided to kind of go for it and I moved to London. Yeah, like I said, I just wanted to give it a try when, you know, it actually happened. I was 22 years old, just graduated uni and another big factor for me then became um, my career I guess. The things that I'm interested in which is like social media stuff and like online content it just wasn't like very developed uh, back in my home country yet. I think it's getting better now but two or three years ago it was kind of non-existent and because there didn't seem to be many career opportunities back home for me I kind of saw moving to London as like a better option for me. Question number eight is was it hard to get a residence permit slash visas? Now because when I moved the UK and Slovenia were both in the EU I didn't um, actually need any permissions to move here. Uh, when I moved here I just got the national insurance number you know before I started working and all that jazz. The biggest problem that I faced was to actually cancel um, like all the insurance and like taxes back in Slovenia because they didn't want to, you know, let me go. <laughs> so that was the biggest problem I faced. I didn't have to have any like um, specific documents that allowed me to move to the UK and to live here. That all went very smoothly. However, I'm not sure what's gonna happen now because the UK is leaving the EU um, in a couple of months and yeah, I'm not sure what that means for me. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to leave the country or if I'm gonna have to have visa or, you know, pay a certain amount of money to stay here. Like, I have no idea what's gonna happen, um, but I guess we'll see. I hope they decide quickly because I really want to start planning my future. <laughs> because all of us immigrants are in a bit of a weird limbo right now and 
we just don't know what's coming, which is really annoying. Okay, question number nine is, what was the worst experience you've had there? Whew. To be honest, I've had quite a lot of bad experiences over here. I don't know, like, I think one of the worst things about living in London is the fact that everything is very expensive. Uh, when it comes to jobs, it is very competitive, especially if you're not from here. You can be like the smartest and the most hardworking person, but um, certain people will still look down on you just because you are an immigrant which I have experienced, unfortunately. But I think these kind of things are going on just in like certain professions and in certain companies that are not like internationally oriented. It hasn't been as easy as I thought it would be. And also one of the worst things um, that I think everyone who moves to London faces with is finding a place to stay, like a room, because most people can't afford the whole like apartment to themselves over here because the rents are so expensive. But yeah, just finding a room is such a pain in the ass. Most of the places are atrocious, there's a lot of demand, so if you see a room that is kind of okay, you just need to take it, otherwise you can end up being homeless, which kind of almost happened to me a couple of times. I was very close to thinking I was gonna be homeless because I just couldn't find a room. It's especially difficult if you don't have like a regular job, if you freelance or you know when you just move here and maybe are not employed yet, it is really difficult. That's like one of the worst things about London for me personally. 10 is tell us about a tourist attraction, sightseeing place you like and talk a little bit about it. Now that I've lived here for like two and a half years, I don't even notice the attractions anymore, like they're just normal to me. So I don't know, what is a tourist attraction that I like? I really just like to go to parks, some of them are on the hill and they have a really nice view of London. One of my favorite is Greenwich Park because I live close to it. So yeah, parks are really good. Another place that I really like is the Sky Garden, which is not like a very known tourist attraction, I would say. If tourists like want to get a nice view of London, they either go to the London Eye or the Shard, which is the tallest building in London. Uh, both of those attractions are very expensive. So if you're on a budget and are coming to London, go to the Sky Garden. It's basically a skyscraper with a 360 view of London. The entry is free. You just have to sign up a few weeks in advance um, to like book your slot and that's it. So yeah, that's like a really cool place to visit if you're ever coming to London. But I am gonna be filming a lot of like London travel guides in the next few months. So hopefully I'll introduce you to even more awesome places. Uh, 11 is, do you speak the local language? Do you think it's important to learn it? Yes, I speak English, obviously. And I think it is important to learn uh, the language of the country you're living in, no matter where you live in. I personally, if I move to another country uh, where they speak, you know, another language that I maybe don't speak myself, I would still try very hard to speak it as fluent as possibly. And I also appreciate, you know, when people, for example, move to my home country, to Slovenia, I really appreciate when they try to speak Slovene as well. So yes, I do think it's important to always learn at least, you know, the basics. At 12 is, what do you think about the country you live in? How well do they receive foreigners? Ooh, that's an interesting one. My answer to this would probably be very different a couple of years ago. You know, with all the Brexit things that went down, I think the majority of the people who decided to vote to leave uh, voted because they don't want immigrants to live here, which I understand to a certain extent. But yeah, like I said before, I definitely did experience uh, being looked down on because I'm an immigrant and now that the Brexit is happening, I'm feeling more and more pressure in regards to that. But generally speaking, I live in London. London is a very multicultural city. And, you know, when I'm walking around the streets and stuff like that, I don't feel like I'm badly received, you know, I feel accepted. I feel like the majority of people who live here do feel accepted. But London is a very different place from, you know, the rest of the country. Like, it is quite separated from the rest of the country, meaning that different kind of people live here. It's, like I said, it's very international and the vibe is 
different. I would say like generally speaking most younger and educated people are very acceptive of foreigners whereas majority of the country is um, a bit more close-minded I guess. And what do I think about the country I live in in general? I don't know. I used to be in love with it before I actually moved here. <laughs> I think I used to see it with like a rose-colored glasses, you know, and now that I live here the situation is different. Um, I mean, I think every country has good things and bad things about it. England is not perfect. Um, it is good when it comes to maybe career opportunities. I feel like I'm very unlucky in that department, but like generally speaking, it definitely provides more career opportunities. But at the same time, it can also be quite a hard place to live in. I'm talking about London in particular because I don't have experience with the rest of the country, but London um, is very, very expensive. The rents are enormous, the food is expensive, the transport is expensive, everything is so freaking expensive and if you don't have a really good paying job, um, it is you know very easy for you to struggle with money and all that jazz. So from that regard, I don't think it's such an amazing place to live in. Um, but you know, if you have a good paying job I guess, then it's fine. Question number 13 is, do you miss your family? Yes, of course, I miss my family, especially since I'm quite close with my family and I've always been surrounded by my family. So moving away was a little bit of a shock to the system, even though I'm like a very independent person. I think I'm holding up pretty well in general. I definitely get that kind of like a, I just want to go home feeling, but I'm dealing with like a difficult thing. But um, yeah, I think I'm doing all right on my own and I talk to my parents every single day on like Viber and Skype. So it's not like I don't speak to anyone, but of course it's not the same as like being physically close <laughs> to your family members. But yeah, that's one of the things that you just have to deal with when you move abroad. Question number 14 is, what products from your home country do you miss the most? Oh my god, food. <laughs> I miss food. Food in Slovenia is so good and here in the UK the food is really shit. I'm sorry to all the Brits out there, but your food is... it's really not good. <laughs> so yeah, I miss like all the food, especially like the homegrown veggies. Especially now that I can't find veggies anywhere here in the UK. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if this is because of Brexit or whatever, but the supermarkets in London are like running out of vegetable. I can't find lettuce anywhere. I haven't been able to find lettuce for like the past two months. It's really hard to get it. Broccoli is a problem. I haven't seen zucchini for like three months. I'm not sure what's going on and I'm seriously considering asking my parents to send me some veggies from back home. <laughs> I know it sounds super silly, but what the hell? Um, okay, question number 15 is what are your plans for the future? Do you want to live there forever? Like I mentioned in my recent weekly vlog, I'm not sure what my plans for the future are. I've been thinking about moving away at the end of this year, uh, possibly back home to Slovenia, maybe to Germany. But I also may end up staying here. I really don't know. I'm very confused right now. I first want to see what's gonna happen with Brexit because that's one of the main parts of why I maybe want to or will have to move out. So yeah, I need to see what happens with that and then I guess I'll try to make a decision that's gonna be the most sensible one for my future and my career. If I maybe manage to get a good job here in London, if I and if I don't have to move out because of Brexit, I will probably stay here for I don't know how many years. Um, if not, I'm obviously gonna move out, but yeah, I guess we'll just see. Um, in the long run though, I definitely see myself moving back home. I just don't know if that's gonna be in like a year or in like 10 years. <laughs> and I guess you never really know where you're gonna end up because life has many surprises in store for you. And I guess a lot of things depend on what kind of opportunities you get and who you meet and all that jazz. 
So yeah, who knows where I'll be in like 10 years time. Okay, question number 16 is what's something you use every day where you live that you think your home country should also have? Maybe like public transport. Public transport is pretty good in London. Right now there's a lot of strikes going on, so it's not the best. But generally speaking, I mean, you know, I've lived here for two and a half years. I don't have a car and I can go pretty much anywhere I want to with a bus or a train or, you know, the underground. Apart from like Scotland and like the countryside, I really want to go explore the countryside in Scotland. But I feel like I need a car for that and I'm terrified of driving, especially on the other side of the road. So if anyone wants to go on a road trip anytime soon, let me know. But yeah, public transport is something that is very poor in Slovenia. The connections are not the best and you truly do need a car to get around the country. So that's one thing I would probably really miss if I moved back home. 17 is what suggestions or tips would you give to someone who wants to live in this country? Like I said, if you are, I don't know, planning to move here, just make sure you have a good job so that you can sustain yourself. And I guess that would be like the most important tip because if you're struggling with money, uh, living in London it gets really stressful, like really, really stressful. I don't know, I could probably come up with a really long list of tips, uh, but I guess it also depends on the person. And like I said, I'm planning to film lots of videos about London soon, so... I guess you'll be able to hear quite a few in the future. And now the last question is, if you could describe in one word your experience in this country, what would it be? If I can pick a phrase, I would say like a roller coaster ride. <laughs> um, because there's been a lot of up and downs, but most importantly, it's been like a very good learning experience. I've learned a lot about myself, about other people, just about the UK in general and I think I really like changed and grew up in the past two years. So yeah that's my answer to the question and this is the end of today's video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any other questions about living abroad or uh, living in London in particular make sure to leave them below and I'll make sure to answer them. There's gonna be a lot of questions, maybe I can do a living abroad or living in London Q&A if you guys want to, I don't know, let me know. But yeah, thank you for watching, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channels to stay up to date with my future videos. Have a nice day and I will see you guys later, bye!